works. But okay, now we're ready. Okay. okay, sorry about that. It was great, by the way. Thanks. Oh, well, I'll get it right this time. By the way, that's not the first time I've done that. So. <laughs> Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Quiet, numbskulls. I'm broadcasting. Can we get serious now? One thing that did happen during the 60s was some music of an unusual or experimental nature did get recorded and did get released. Now look at who the executives were in those companies at those times. Not hip young guys. These were cigar chomping old guys who looked at the product that came and said, I don't know. Who knows what it is? Record it. Stick it out of it. It sells. All right. We were better off with those guys than we are now with the supposedly hip young executives who are making the decisions of what people should see and hear in the marketplace. Success in the music business begins with a dream, a vision. This podcast will give you, the listener, the insight and tools to turn that vision into a reality. Meet the industry professionals who work day by day behind the scenes, helping to make those dreams come true. Welcome to the business side of music. Here in the studio in Nashville, Tennessee, Byron Nemeth is with us. He's a multi-instrumentalist and hard rock aficionado who's done tours and taken part in many stellar releases to date, who knew at a young age that music was his true calling. Upon hearing Elvis and the Beatles from his wonderful parents, as I said previously, we've all kind of gone down that same path. As a birthday music gift, he turned his attention to learning guitar and studying the styles of Randy Rhodes, Michael Schenker, Jimmy Page, Joe Satriani, Steve Vai, Joe Perry, plus jazz and classical music, which you've got some formal training on, and we're going to talk about that. Throughout his career, Byron has opened for such notable bands as Metal Church, Warrant, Winger, Rat, y and Dream Theater, one of my favorite acts, Rick Emmett, Vicious Rumors, Helix, Yes, Zach Wild with Black Label Society, Richie Kotzen, The Sweet Lynch Mob, Pat Travers Band, and many more. Welcome to the show. Bob, thank you so much for having me. I truly appreciate you taking the time to have me here. Well, you're a newbie. We talked about that before the show. You just came to Nashville. Where are you from originally? Originally, I was born in Quito, Ecuador, South America. I grew up there as a young child. I was raised in Cleveland, Ohio, because my parents brought me to Cleveland and uh, spent the glorious 80s there. And then in 2010, I made the decision to uh, move to Phoenix, Arizona to pursue more music and technology. And we'll talk about that in a second. And then I came, uh, I came here in May. I came to Nashville in May because the music business is here and I want to take it to the next level. And part of that is the new video that I just put out and everything that's involved with doing that. New video is called You Know It's True. And it's doing great on social media right now and doing great on YouTube. And it's, it's where I'm at right now as a musician, as an artist, as a guitar player and it's it's the rock and roll and, and hard rock that I'm bringing to Nashville and I want to go national with it and that's why I'm here. And that's an interesting topic of discussion because when we talk about Nashville we don't really at least immediately think of that as as a rock and roll town or a hard rock town although we have the Kings of Leon here and some other acts that come out of Music right. City. Nashville versus LA, Nashville versus New York, what was that draw that brought you here? Absolutely. The the recording studios, the hard rock producers that have all moved here from Los Angeles and the fabulous A-level players. And that's that's why I moved, because I wanted to be around that type of community that uh, un- understood uh, my style of music, which they immediately did. And I found some really fabulous players and we tracked the drums at uh, Blackbird Studios. Right. And my producer was Tim Dolbear, and we tracked the guitars at his studio, at Eclectica Studios, and I found exactly what I was looking for. And the video and the song came out absolutely beautiful, and I'm very proud of it. And it's a statement to the type of hard rock that is happening now here, and and that's why I'm here, to, to drive that message home to everybody that likes that style of music, and I'm super proud to do that. Let's back up a little bit, because I mentioned in the beginning you had a little bit of formal education in your life. Uh, you went to Cleveland University, I guess it was? Correct, yes. I, and, I, and I've had really great guitar teachers in my life uh, ever since I was a small child. And I've had music in my life as a whole. And in, in, at Cleveland State, I studied classical guitar. I, I learned the fundamentals of flamenco guitar. And I've always just played a lot of guitar. And in the process of being a student of it, I also became a teacher of it. And you know, when you teach is when you really learn. 
and years later, as life went on, I just kept playing and then kept getting more and more uh, involved with the instrument in terms of composition and songwriting, and then ultimately teaching other young guitar students. And now I have guitar students that I teach through Zoom and around the country that are doing really well. When you talk about teaching, it obviously musical influences the flamenco guitar. I mean, that is something Spanish guitar, that, yeah. Spanish guitar. Yeah, yeah. That's something that is not necessarily easy. Was that self-taught? You did that through some teachers and, and then carried it on yourself? Combination of all of it. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, the, the Spanish guitar, that's really ju- the Phrygian scale. And the Phrygian scale is what defines that Spanish flavor that we love in guitar. And I try and bring that into my music. And it just brings that Spanish element to the hard rock and roll that I find very, very beautiful. And so I just you think you translate great. that over in, into the rock? When I can, yeah. in the right areas, of course. Yes, yeah. yes. I'm definitely a you know, hard rock artist all the way. But if when I can bring in the flavor of the Spanish guitar, why not? It just makes it sound interesting and more beautiful. We listed, obviously, a lot of contemporaries and luminaries that you listen to mm-hmm. and study, but was there a particular actor, artist, or band that really kind of went, you went, oh my gosh, this is amazing, That's then that pointed you in that direction? Yeah, absolutely. Um, in the f- and There's been many directions, of course, musically speaking, but in the flamenco direction, definitely Christopher Parkening and Andrew Segovia. And that's who did it for me in in that direction. And in the hard rock metal direction, it was absolutely Eddie Van Halen and Randy Rhodes. And the marriage of you know of the of the styles of flamenco and rock are, are are not that far apart really. It's just how you you create the composition from the artistic aesthetic to bring it out to the masses, and that's a, a key ingredient in what I do to make music and especially hard rock music interesting for the listener today. Where you grew up as a child, was there a, a wide diversity of music? And I ask that because we have listeners from all over the, uh, the planet and, and Central and South America. Mm-hmm. We have quite a few. Did you have a good smorgasbord of music to listen to? Because you mentioned Elvis and the Beatles in your bio, but yeah. were were you able to listen to other styles of music down there? Absolutely, yeah. There's all different kinds of music. And obviously my parents were the influence because of the age range, you know, that, that they uh, loved Elvis and the Beatles. And that's how I got hooked into music. It all started from them. My parents, uh, Maria and Paul, were just wonderful, fabulous parents that completely supported everything that I, I did, and and I. Now, were they musically inclined? No, no, they were not, but they were totally supportive of of my uh, life goal to be involved in it, hundred percent supportive, and just you know fed me music that they liked, that they thought I would like, and Elvis and the Beatles were that, along with other ethnic music from, you know, from uh, Quito, Ecuador, and then and then of course the you know the '80s rock that I I grew up in in Cleveland as, as a young man, and just started rocketing from there. The rock scene, when we talk about that, it's obviously changed a lot. And, and you mentioned the 80s acts. You know, we hit, look, once again, you had Y&T, you had Rat, you had yep. Warrant, uh, you had Poison, you had Motley Crue, you had all these groups. And I don't want to necessarily say they ran their course, but mm-hmm. there was a time for them. Do you think that the window of opportunity is there once again for that style of rock or for heavy metal, hard rock, is there a big enough audience or has it become more of a niche? I think with the new music business as it sits today, especially since the internet has come into play, I think the answer to that is yes, and not just for hard rock, but for any style of music, really. It, but now we're in an era, and this this can dovetail into our a thought process of, of technology, which I'm also involved in. Now we're in an era where it's a DIY situation, where the artist has to wear many hats, and and to promote your music, whether it's hard rock or any other style of music, you have to be very involved in the business aspect of it and treat it completely as a business, of course, which I do, and also treat and understand the technology aspect of it. And I have a a long career in in web development. And the beauty of doing that and having different clients outside of music is that I have the technology knowledge to drive my own music career. And that's extremely helpful because that's one of the most expensive positions that an artist has to pay for if they don't know that technology. And I know it very well. I use that knowledge to drive the music on social media, to drive it through my website, 
to drive it on YouTube and to drive publicity to bring attention to what I'm doing. And I think that's a, a crucial element in exposing and, and getting music out to the masses, whether it's hard rock or any style these days, because it's about you taking charge of, of your own destiny and your own career. And that's, and I feel I've done that very successfully with my life by understanding technology and bringing that into, into my music. Let me ask you this. At what age did you pick up the guitar and start playing? Five. Five. Mm -hmm. Classical, electric? Um, I would I would term it at five years old, kind of like just like a, like noodling, you know, the yeah, noodle, noodling and just having fun with it. The, the formal lessons really didn't start till I was about, you know, 12, 13, 14 years old. Yeah. Right around there and just kept going from there and just never stopped. Because obviously when we talk about technology, the, the technology from then to now has transpired so much bigger. Right. It's, it's a great big new world out there. Right, right, right. Um, do you think that, well, let, let me back up for a second. When we talk about you coming to Nashville, mm -hmm. and, and once again, Music City, but it's it's got mm -hmm. a little bit of a cowboy hat to it that, mm -hmm. that one likes to wear when they talk about Nashville. But when you come to Nashville, and, and you said the great studios that you got into. Right. How difficult was it to find the players that you needed? To, did you bring any of them with you, or did you just find them here in the city? I found them all here, and it wasn't difficult at all. I found them all in one week. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole thing was put together really, really fast, and I feel very, very fortunate and very lucky that that happened. You know, the players were just fantastic, and and they it just it would, all came together. It's all been a wonderful, uh, you know, serendipitous, you know, journey here for me and and I it, it wasn't hard at all you know and I and I tapped into the hard rock community immediately and and now it's rocking and rolling and now it's going to the next level the next step now now that the video is out is the live show so I'm, I'm putting together my live band to represent everything that I've done in my catalog on top of the new song of course that I just recorded and that's going to feature um, material that I did with the members of the Steve Vai band a few years ago out in California obviously the new song uh, that's called You Know It's True that got just released a little bit of uh, the material from Sacred Heart from the 80s that was really popular in Europe and that's what I'm going to come out with and that's going to be happening in the new year in the studio with us here in Nashville Tennessee Byron Nemeth hey guys this is Mark Jones check out the episode featuring Sarah Fleshner on the business side of music podcast you're listening to the business side of music when you have a Korg synth at your fingertips, the possibilities are endless. Be it digital, analog, analog modeling, altered FM, wave sequencing, or the multi-engine synth, Korg gives you easy access to a variety of features to help you get the perfect sounds quickly. Whether you're a professional musician or just starting out, Korg truly has a synthesizer to help you express yourself. Visit Korg.com or your favorite Korg dealer to get your hands on one of their products to create new music always. Korg, the official sponsor of the business side of music. Hi everyone, I'm Larry Butler, and I want to send you a free digital copy of my new book, The Singer-Songwriter Rulebook. 101 ways to help you improve your chances of success. That's right. Everything you need to know to launch your career as a singer-songwriter, all based on my 40 years in the live performance arena. And believe me, I've seen it all. In my book, you'll find the 10 things you have to deal with before even thinking about becoming a singer-songwriter performer. You'll also learn about the five things every singer-songwriter can do this weekend to make their live show better. Five things I can guarantee that you are not doing already. Plus, there's tips on songwriting and staging, photo and video shoots, publishing, merch, dozens of other topics, all written for people who don't particularly like to read. And again, it's free. Just go to the Business Side of Music website homepage and look for my book cover. Click on it, and a free digital copy of my book will be yours. I'm Larry Butler, and I approve of this message. You're listening to the Business Side of Music.
Back in the studio with us here in Nashville, Tennessee, Byron Nemeth is sitting across the podcast table with me today. Uh, during the break, you said you had a couple other things that uh, you wanted to throw out here. Yeah, yeah, two, two quick things that I wanted to throw out here that I think are, are really important. As you know, the way us musicians um, make uh, money these days because of how drastically the Internet has changed music is through merch sales. And I'm very uh, excited to announce that I'm going to be, um, I've already had a merch store happening for over a year now on my website, byronemeth.com. And I'm excited to announce that there's going to be a new t-shirt design that I have coming out. And I'm also coming out with my uh, new branded wine. It's going to be the Byron Nemeth Pinot Noir wine. And that's an exclusive to your show. No one has heard that publicly before. Wow. So, you, so, so you're getting that, and you have picked my my favorite variety of wine. Um, so I'll bring definitely got to see if we can get a bottle here. Yeah, I'll bring you a bottle. Yeah, for sure. And that'll be uh, hitting the markets uh, in the next couple of weeks. And then also um, to add to the technology that drives the music in my career, I'm uh, launching a new um, a new consulting platform, and the and that platform is Nashville Dot Studio, and that's exclusive to your show too. And that's going to be launching on Halloween this weekend. Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that's all happening all at once all you time. have a lot on your plate at the same time totally do I, yep i have to ask because how do you pull that off i'm a disciplined person i manage time and i take this very seriously do you sleep yeah i absolutely do i yeah. have a great sleep schedule and i work out all the time yeah you know working out helps you sleep and i just i'm very a, a very disciplined person because i'm i'm serious about what i'm doing and i want to take this to the next level Let's talk about the consulting end of things for sure. a minute. What What is sure, that sure. all about? Sure. Yeah, that's going to be a, a consulting website that is going to service the markets here in Nashville and really anywhere in the world that are dealing with uh, the medical fields, the real estate fields and the education fields and the music business field. And what it is, is I'm going to I'm going to look for clients that already have established websites and need more information of technology as to how it can work to help them better either with software or how they're positioning themselves on the net. Which which is the exact same thing that I do for my website as an artist. What the business is almost doesn't matter. I can help anyone. But the knowledge, and that's the key thing, is what drives the financial aspect for me and allows me to be my own artist and, and move forward in this new music business. And I like what you said there because we talk about this and that's why the show's what it is. Yep. There, This is a business and you have to develop the proper tools to get yourself positioned correctly in a visible space on the internet because it is once again a great big world out there and it doesn't matter whether you're a law firm or a doctor's practice medical practice or a musician or yeah. a musician yeah. you've you've really got to do that so yeah that's really cool that you're putting that together totally yeah absolutely and 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 when you control technology bob you control uh, your destiny and that's what it is what's going on with me right now Let's talk about the music video. Uh, well, let's talk about the song. You know, it's true. Okay. You, the sole songwriter, did you co-write it? Is all of your music pretty, pretty much original? All of it's original. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And, and I wrote all the music and the lyrics. And the focus of the lyrics is kind of like a, a positive self-empowerment song that you, that you know it's true, what you can do for yourself if you believe in yourself. It's really about believing in yourself and trying to get to the next step and the next level with, with what you're trying to do. And in, in this particular song, and in my case, it's, it's with music and with the artistry of, of the hard rock material that I do. What influences you to write the songs that you write for your projects? Life experiences. Yeah. Definitely life experiences and um, just a, a passion for creating a great hard rock art aesthetic with what I do. I do that with my music and with all of the precise artwork that I have on my website and everything that's involved with like my merch and everything in, in the team that's around me. When you put a song together, when you structure a song, you, you have obviously a general idea and you're making notes as you write the lyrics. Yep. And do you hear the melody? Do you hear the that structure of the song in your head before you put it together? Or do, are you creating as you go? It's a combination of both. Yeah. I, I write in Apple Logic. So musically, that's where all the music happens as a scratch pad. And I do very thorough demos before we go into the big studio. And I map out the whole thing. I map out the lyrics. I, you know, write the, write the lyrics down and go over them and just try and have it as complete as possible be, before I present it to, to my musicians so that there's a, a clear indication of what the path is for the, the artwork, for the music, for everything. When you put a, a project together, and, and this is your latest one that you're doing. Correct. How many projects do you have out there previous to this? Uh, different uh, various um, 
versions of Byron Nemeth Group, and the one that you see here on the video is the latest version for yeah. Nashville. And, and I've had a number of them, and I've put them all under, under, all under my moniker, which is either Byron Nemeth or Byron Nemeth Group. And I'm definitely going to function as Byron Nemeth Group here in Nashville with the group of musicians that I'm with. And I was going to ask you that. So the session players that you used in the studio, are those the cats that are going to go on with you on the road? No, it's, there's going to be different cats, different players that are going to uh, play with me live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and yeah. It, so is the search on for them right now, or do you pretty no, much know who they are? No, I already know who they are. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I've, I've found them through uh, various, various contacts that introduced me to them. Let me tell you who they are. Playing uh, with me live is uh, going to be my super good friend, uh, Steve Braun, on lead vocals. Really, really, really great guy. I met Steve on the road when we were both opening up in different bands, opening up for Metal Church, you know, before the pandemic. And that's where I met Steve and we formed a bond, had a, you know, great working re relationship ever since then. And he's just a fabulous singer. And then uh, for the live show, uh, my drummer's going to be uh, Richie Rivera. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and uh, on bass guitar, it's going to be Mark Warner. So Got some talented players there. Super, yeah, super talented players, yeah. And I'm super excited about coming out with a big live show, big production. Were you touring a lot before the pandemic hit? Yeah. Pr pretty steady? Yeah, oh yeah. We I did a full U.S. tour with, um, with opening for Metal Church. Yeah, and, and that was a really great time, and it, it was a, just a wonderful experience. Got to, see, got to see all of the United States and wonderful shows, packed audiences everywhere. Were, were you touring when the pandemic hit, or no. you, you had come home at that I, point? I had come already at, yeah. by that point, yeah, yeah. So are, when do you plan on getting back out on the road? Uh, we're looking to start doing uh, one-off live shows uh, in, in January. Rehearsals start next month. Yeah. And the way I want to approach this is do one-off shows and do some micro-touring, meaning doing two, three dates here and there. Because before I schedule anything longer in nature, I want to make sure that everything is okay with uh, clubs being able to al allow us to play. Because you don't want to schedule a bunch of dates and then be shut down. And you're seeing some of that going on now. Yeah, you still are. And, and that, yeah. that's tough to put riding together. Of course, Nashville is perfect for that because right. we, you know, we're surrounded by numerous states. So right. a right, day's right. drive can put you in, in several major different cities. Right, yeah, right. So that's, that's, that's exactly right. So that's the business strategy, to do uh, a one-off, then... Uh, um, you know, then two, three dates, and then once that's accomplished, then look at you know doing you know much more longer dates and going to different locations. The show that you're putting together now, that that live performance, about how long is it going to be each night? Uh, we're looking to do to do about an hour, and 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 do co some um, co-headlining uh, nights with other bands too. Right. And start off that way. I think that's a good way to start. Are you finding other bands that, uh, with your same mindset, trying to get out there that you can work with and tour with? Oh yeah, there's plenty of them out there. Yeah. It's the same situation. They're, they they have the same concerns. They want to you know do more shows. It's just can something be scheduled long term that won't get shut down. Yeah. Same. We're all having kind of the same philosophy. You know, do one off, then then do a couple, two, three shows, and then try and extend it. All that will reveal itself in the you know in the coming weeks as we see. You know how how society goes into winter and what happens with, we you know with COVID either shutting down or not not, yeah. not shutting down. Now, are you booking yourself? You have an agent that's booking you at the moment. I'm booking myself. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I'm not against an agent. Yeah. So if, if there's an agent out there listening, yeah, have them contact me. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> In the studio with us here today, Byron Nemeth. Hi, this is Amira Alvarez, founder and CEO of The Unstoppable Woman. Join us as we have a look beyond the mics and the lights here on the business side of music. You're listening to the business side of music. Hey there, my name is Dr. Garrett Hope. I am a composer, coach, podcaster, and speaker. I've been focused on building my music business since 2014 and helping others build theirs since 2015. I want to tell you about the second annual Ultimate Music Business Summit we are organizing. It'll take place early January of 2022. There will be dozens of presentations with highly actionable content, all of it available to you so you can start your business, grow your business, and ultimately make more money. Because here's the deal. Unless you earn all of your income from an employer, you are a self-employed small business owner. And if you want to do more than survive, if you want to grow your audience, or if you want to impact more people, you have to think and act like a business owner. And that means this summit is for you. This summit will give you real world, not theoretical strategies you can implement immediately. 
You don't need to be stuck with fear or living in your failures. I promise you, with all the teachers lined up, you will get something you've never thought of before. Even though building a business is hard, no one is promising it's easy. It is possible. You just need the right tools and strategies. Tickets for this virtual event will go on sale soon. To be the first in line and to get more information about the summit, presenters, and more, go to musicsummit.biz. That's musicsummit.biz and add your email to the list. Since 1963, Korg has been creating new experiences in music and performance. That is what drove the creation of some of Korg's most legendary products, such as the Poly 6, the M1, the Electribe, the Triton, the Minilog, the Kronos, Wavestate, Op6, and most recently, the Nautilus, which is what we have here in our studio. Korg is dedicated to creating new, innovative, and uncompromising instruments which maintain the highest quality to inspire music makers, past, present, and future. Visit Korg.com or your favorite Korg dealer to get your hands on one of their products and start creating new music always. Korg, the official sponsor of the business side of music. You're listening to the business side of music. Back in the studio here in Nashville, Tennessee, Byron Nemeth is sitting across the table from me. We talk about your video. You know it's true. Yep. And that's out there. It, it's on YouTube, obviously. Correct. All the platforms. I was going to say, is it getting airplay? Every single platform. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What's been the response like? It's been fabulous. People yeah. love it. The minute they hear it, they're hooked right away. And they're like, we want to hear more of this music. So I know I've tapped into the right audience because I think there's a, a need in the marketplace for, you know, really great guitar playing, really great vocals, catchy hooks. Yeah. That, that I think people, I just want to hear more of that they haven't heard in a while. So I'm, I'm bringing that back. And it's it looked like when you watched the video, you guys were having fun doing this. Yeah. In, in the, and you recorded that in the studio? Correct. Yeah, it, during the same time that you were doing it? Oh, no, no, the video was shot separately. The yeah, video yeah, was yeah, shot yeah, separately. Yeah. All the audio was recorded in at one time, and then the video was shot separately. Yeah. yeah. But it was a performance video. But you guys had a lot of fun. Oh, totally. Yeah. All the time. Yeah. Yeah. And then getting the music out there, this is going to be, you're doing just singles. You're not necessarily worrying about an album. Correct. Yeah. And the way I see the music business at the moment, and, and you have to be flexible with this opinion, and I, I totally am, but the way I'm seeing it at the moment, it's like we're back in the 50s now. This is a singles market, and and depending on where you're at in the level of your career, unless you're like Metallica, you know, re -re releasing a whole album, I think, is a risky proposition. What's important here now is to release singles and release really great videos with singles. Right. And that's the business plan. I want to con do continuously release new singles with a, a video attached to it and drive the market as hard as possible with that. I'm not totally against doing an album. It's certainly a thought. But I think that might be a little bit down the road when I have a collection of singles and then I can put them all together and, and then maybe release that as a single. But again, unless you're a big time band like Metallica, releasing an album, I think, is a hard proposition because it just flies by everybody's head. Right. There's so much noise out there. There's so much clutter on the Internet that if you can focus your attention hard on driving one song that has a great video, I think that's the ticket for any artist, really. What about merchandise when you're out on the road? You're obviously not going to be selling albums because you've you're talking about singles. So there's other because we talk a lot about when bands are touring right. having merchandise to sell. Right. So you're going to have new shirts out there. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Like full on merchandise. Yeah. yeah. And that's that's how I've been driving my store online. That that has been has been doing really well last year. And and just I'm just gonna keep adding new products to it. Besides, you know, T-shirts, I have hoodies, tank tops, co you know, coffee mugs, you know, hats, a new T-shirt design. Now the branded wine, the Pinot Noir, Byron Nemeth Pinot Noir. I don't want to. I want to ask you about that. How did you get into that? Deciding to do your <laughs> your own uh, your own brand of wine. <laughs> Because I, I got into it because I, I thought it would be a really great area to also try and explore, and, and and it's been working out well. I got a partnership together with City Winery downtown here in Nashville to do the the private private label uh, part of it for me, and they were all for it, and and they're uh, they're they're my partner in it, which is great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
what's the future? You're going to just keep continuing to write great music and yep. working to get it out there yep. along with the touring end of things? Yeah, absolutely. And and then on, on the live show for the touring end of things, the goal is to try and obviously headline shows and or become part of a of a bigger tour like I did before and just work it as hard as possible and live the dream as much as I can. When you talk about touring, obviously we talk a lot about here in the United States and doing the club scene because that's for a good part where the metal scene is at. Do you see yourself going across the pond to Europe or over to Asia? Totally. Doing it there. Is, is there interest there? Yeah, there's definitely interest there, especially in Germany. You know, Germany and England, they, they love this kind of music. Italy, Portugal, Greece, they totally love this kind of music. The question is, is how can that be done with, with you know, any type of COVID restrictions? It goes back to what we, just, we were saying a couple minutes ago. When it all opens up, then yeah, for sure. And then we can take it to the next level there. Do you have the patience for that? I mean, it's going to take a while, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a very patient person. You have to be to be an entrepreneur and to be involved in the music business. Yeah. You take it one day at a time and you plan and map out the best that you can. And you cross your fingers and you give it your best shot. If you had to give advice to a young artist, a younger you, you know, 20 years ago or so, mm -hmm. what would that advice be that you give them? Do this absolutely because you love it, because that's the only reason to do it, do it. That's the emotional reason to do it. And then on top of that, the practical business reason is, is learn technology because you're going to need to know it. And that's a piece of advice, not just for music, but for anybody anywhere in life. Yeah. It, it definitely is. Yeah. Byron, thank you so much. Bob, thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for having me. The business side of music is the creation of Tom Sabella and Tracy Snow and is produced by Bob Bender. The business side of music is recorded at Music Dog Studios in Nashville, Tennessee. Production sound design by Keith Stark. Voiceover and promo by Lisa Fuson.